The goal of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother's Yoga is not to stop at individual salvation. The individual, of course, is the unit of the consciousness of uh, the collectivity and therefore the yoga has to start with each individual but uh, the goal of yoga as a whole is to raise the consciousness of the planet earth and uh, that will happen if a large number of uh, people are working towards the rise in the level of consciousness. In Savitri that is Ashwapati's aspiration that the earth as it is should not uh, continue to be a place of uh, evil, suffering and misery where death is a necessity but from there the world should move towards uh, a greater manifestation of the divine to a state where the human being has an awareness, a consciousness that extends above the mental and uh, in that state the essential consciousness should be that of uh, oneness rather than division and uh, at that level of consciousness, death would no longer be a necessity. It is with that aspiration that Ashwapati undertakes his yoga and he can see the world that is from the world to be. And because of that, he pleads with the Divine Mother to make it possible and finally secures a boon that the one, the mother or Savitri, would come and descend on this earth to do what Ashwapati aspires for. Now, why did Sri Aurobindo develop this aspiration? Because this aspiration is uh, a natural sequel to the trend in the evolution so far. Starting with inconscient matter, we had uh, creatures which uh, expressed the divine consciousness which was completely hidden in matter these creatures which had life, they expressed it to a greater extent and then came those creatures which had a mind which expressed it even more and the latest product of this course of evolution is the human being who expresses it better than any other creature alive so far. But then uh, if the trend of evolution is any indication, that is not the end of uh, the process and uh, man should give way to a creature that expresses the consciousness of the divine inherent in all creation to an even greater extent. However, a human being is uh, unique in that it can uh, work towards a rise in its consciousness during its own lifetime and therefore the further evolution need not necessarily depend upon the slow and natural process of evolution. The fact that uh, creatures with a level of consciousness higher than man uh, will be there seems to be inevitable. But then the process can be accelerated and the process can be accelerated by human effort and further Sri Aurobindo uh, brought in in Savitri the element of uh, a divine creature who descends on earth with this express mission to raise the consciousness of earth. When we talk of consciousness of the earth or the world, it essentially refers to human consciousness because it is human beings that uh, have the highest level of consciousness on earth today and uh, it is they who dominate the earth and determine the plane of consciousness from where the affairs of the world are conducted. As we read Savitri, we find that Sri Aurobindo is uh, very much aware of the present state of uh, the world, the present state of humanity. Uh, he is very much in touch with the realities and yet he is very optimistic about the future. Not only is optimistic about the future, he is in fact very certain that uh, the future is bright, the destiny of man is uh, nothing short of the divine and uh, that not only this destiny will be fulfilled, the process of uh, the fulfillment of this destiny can be accelerated through the divine intervention as uh, epitomized by Savitri in uh, the epic. Sri considers the world to be an unfinished product, a sort of a first draft and uh, there cannot be a final draft unless there is a first draft and therefore this seems to be a necessary step but uh, the process has not yet stopped. As he says in Savitri, an attempt, a drawing half done is the world's life, its lines doubt their concealed significance. The drawing as we see it now does not fully reveal 
what uh, each line will end up accomplishing. Its curves join not their high intended close, yet some first image of greatness trembles there and when the ambiguous crowded parts have met, the many toned unity to which they moved, the artist's joy shall laugh at reason's rules. Right now, looking at the world, sometimes we use the tool of reason to point out all its defects and deficiencies, not realizing that uh, as uh, these unfinished lines and curves move towards uh, their final uh, shape, the shape that the creator, the artist has in mind, uh, we would realize that uh, all the rules of reason uh, by which we saw all these defects, which made us see all these defects, were in fact uh, quite ridiculous and uh, the artist would have the last laugh. The artist joy shall laugh at reason's rules. The divine intention suddenly shall be seen. The end vindicate intuition's sure technique. So the type of technique that uh, this great artist, the divine has used to create the world is not based on reason, it is based on an intuitive technique and this technique shall be vindicated when the drawing is complete. The drawing would be far better than any that we can imagine and uh, all the defects and all the uh, deficiencies, all the drawbacks that we, we can see today using reason would have all disappeared. And when we talk of the world be being uh, an unfinished product, a first draft, just the beginning of uh, a grand drawing a grand piece of art, what we are referring to is uh, primarily man who will uh, uh, be the base from where the next stage in evolution will spring and uh, we get a glimpse of that, the present state of man and what he could possibly be uh, from page 78. A thinking being in an unthinking world, an island in the sea of the unknown he is a smallness trying to be great, an animal with some instincts of a god, his life a story too common to be told, his deeds a number summing up to naught, his consciousness a torch lit to be quenched. So the human being as he is now is in fact uh, not a very significant creature, not uh, really so remarkably different from animals and uh, his all his deeds, all his activity really does not amount to much of achievement, all his activities in fact sum up to a knot and, uh, and so on. But uh, yet a greater destiny may be his. For the eternal spirit is his truth because the most fundamental reality, the imperishable constant reality of all creation including the human being is the divine, the eternal spirit of the divine. And uh, the human being is the one who expresses that potential, the potential of the divine, it's uh, his uh, inherent divinity to a greater extent than any other creature so far and therefore uh, uh, the process of evolution will lead to the greater destiny of man uh, to be expressed. He can recreate himself and all around and fashion new the world in which he lives. So that is uh, the destiny of man, to recreate himself. and. In the process, recreate everything all around him and fashion new the world in which he lives and thereby change the character of the world itself. He ignorant is the knower beyond time. He is the self above nature, above fate. He, that is the divine, the divine in man is the knower beyond time and he is the self, the true self of man above nature, above fate. Now let's focus a little on uh, the human being and the world as it is now. Right now the uh, knowledge and awareness of man is very limited and so is his power and so is his capacity to manifest the divine. And that is because the tools that he has at his disposal are rather weak and uh, not equal to the great task of manifesting the divine. The highest tool that he has available is the mind and the highest faculty of mind is his capacity to reason. But uh, while reason has been able to achieve a lot in the material sphere, all the developments in science and technology are essentially the product of the human intellect of which uh, reason is uh, the most uh, powerful tool. Uh, that is not the ultimate arbiter of truth 
and it is because of the limitations of the tools that he has available that uh, we do not expect the human being to be ordinarily able to uh, reach the truth using the tools that are uh, most uh, visible in him, the tools that he trusts the most and uh, those are the tools of the mind. While man has within him the eternal light of the divine, as Sri Aurobindo says on page 305, a cave of darkness guards the eternal light. So this eternal light is in fact guarded in the human being by his uh, body and mind by a, which are equivalent to a cave of darkness. They only succeed in keeping this eternal light completely hidden and man is hardly aware of it. So it is the inadequacy of the tools that man has uh, which uh, reduce man to the level at which he lives now. And it is because of this that he is preoccupied with rather small things. Too small in view of uh, his potential, uh, the everyday mundane activities of life and uh, gets satisfied with relatively small achievements. Uh, as Sri Aurobindo says in the Savitri on page 148, A little joy and knowledge satisfied, this little being tied into a knot and hung on a bulge of its environment a little curve cut off in measureless space, a little span of life in all vast time. A thought was there that planned a will that strove, but for small aims within a narrow scope. Wasting unmeasured toil on transient things, it knew itself a creature of the mud. It asked no larger law, no loftier air. It had no inward look, no upward gaze. So man is hardly aware of his potential and uh, is quite willing to spend his life on rather small and narrow and trivial pursuits and is quite satisfied with that. However, that does not mean that uh, every man has to waste all his life like that because uh, although uh, the mind is his uh, best tool and that is inadequate for uh, expressing the divine, uh, there are glimpses, there are uh, hints of uh, the infinite even in human life. And uh, if there is one hint that is required, it is love. Human love of course is a highly degraded form of divine love and is based primarily on what one can get from the object of love rather than what one can give it. But uh, any love is better than no love at all. And uh, this is something which again is a recurrent theme throughout Savitri and we find that uh, Sri has uh, considered love to be a great instrument on earth, a great instrument for manifesting the divine on earth and uh, has called it the bridge or the link between heaven and earth. There are a few lines from page 397. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. Beyond, there is a power that knows beyond anything that human beings can ordinarily know. We are greater than our thoughts and sometimes earth unveils that vision here. So some glimpses, some hints of uh, that larger reality and larger potential of man going beyond his thoughts and beyond his ordinary knowledge are visible on earth. And what is that? To live, to love are signs of infinite things. So it is this urge to live and to love which are the signs of infinite things. Love is a glory from eternity's fears, abased, disfigured, mocked by baser mites that steal his name and shape and ecstasy. He is still the Godhead by which all can change. So although disfigured and distorted, love still is the Godhead by which all can change on earth. However, uh, uh, to take the course of evolution beyond man, and uh, have a creature that will express divinity completely might have been the intention of uh, the divine while starting this entire process. Uh, the world as we see it in fact presents a very discouraging spectacle and uh, it looks as if uh, the divine experiment is failed and uh, the divine in fact might be now reconsidering whether this experiment will can ever be carried to completion by this uh, creature 
that he has created, this creature somewhere between the animal and the divine, whether this creature really will be able to take the uh, experiment to its completion. Uh, and in that sense, uh, uh, life may be considered a marvel missed. As Sri Aurobindo says on page 441, human being who was once the eternal witness once of eternity, a deathless sojourner mid transient scenes, he camps in life's half-lit obscurity amid the debris of his thoughts and dreams. So the human being has pitched his camp in half-lit obscurity, half-lit by his mind amid the debris of his thoughts and dreams. His thoughts and dreams don't amount to much and in that sense they uh, keep uh, crumbling and uh, never add up to the truth and it is uh, in the midst of this debris that the human being lives and camps and spends his life. But all this obscurity cannot still completely hide the ultimate potential of man. He says a little later on page 457, if human will could be made one with gods, if human thought could echo the thoughts of God, man might be all-knowing and omnipotent. So what it requires for man to manifest his divinity is for his will to coincide with the divine will. And that is possible because uh, man has the divine within and this divine within is not inert, it is not a passive spectator, it does guide man. And if man were to carry out his actions in keeping with this uh, divine will, which is communicated to him from his deeper self, then human will can coincide with the divine will and that can gradually lead to a transformation of uh, the emotional and the intellectual part of the being also, so that uh, the emotions and the intellect would become collaborators of the soul, of the divine essence of man, rather than continue to be its adversaries as they very commonly are. So it's possible for uh, all parts of the being, the mind, the intellect and the soul, to speak in the same voice and uh, when they speak in the same voice, it will be the voice of the soul and in that sense, the human will can coincide with the divine will and uh, human thoughts can be the same as the thoughts of God. And uh, that is what can make man all-knowing and omnipotent, that is achieve union with the divine, become one with the divine, achieve the knowledge of the divine through identity. If human will could be made one with God's, if human thought could echo the thoughts of God, man might be all-knowing and omnipotent, but now he walks in nature's doubtful ray. Now he tries to find his path in a doubtful ray of light coming from his mind. Yet can the mind of man receive God's light. But man's mind is not completely divorced from God's light. There might be a veil, but that veil can be removed. The force of man can be driven by God's force. Then is he a miracle among miracles, for only so can he be nature's king? So these possibilities give Sri Aurobindo a confidence that although there is a big job to be done to move from the present state of consciousness, the present state of human consciousness to a complete identity with the divine is a long journey. It's a big job. It's a difficult job on earth. And the tools that man has available are rather blunt. His mind is not well equipped for such a stupendous task, but yet it will happen one day. And this is the certitude that uh, he expresses on page 110. The light now distant shall grow native here. The strength that visits us, our comrade power. The ineffable shall find a secret voice. The imperishable burn through matter's screen, making this mortal body Godhead's robe. So the light of the divine that now appears distant shall grow native here, shall have uh, its, shall inhabit this earth, shall inhabit the human being uh, and ex be expressed. The light now distant shall grow native here, the strength, the strength of the divine that visits us, our comrade power, that strength will become our uh, comrade power. The ineffable shall find a secret voice, what we are unable to express in finite words will get expressed through a secret voice. The imperishable burn through matter's screen, 
making this mortal body Godhead's robe. And uh, later on page 330, the supreme confidence that a new creation shall arise, a new creation from the old shall rise, a knowledge inarticulate find speech, beauty suppressed burst into paradise bloom, pleasure and pain dive into absolute bliss. So we shall emerge from this uh, world of uh, dualities, this world of uh, inadequate knowledge and speech into a new world, a new creation from the old shall rise, a knowledge, knowledge with the capital K, that is uh, the knowledge of the absolute reality, a knowledge inarticulate shall find speech, beauty suppressed burst into paradise bloom, the beauty cannot be fully expressed unless uh, the divine is expressed. So that suppressed beauty shall burst into paradise bloom, pleasure and pain dive into absolute bliss. Because pleasure and pain, the dualities of life in general, are nothing but the two sides of the same coin. And uh, in that sense, pleasure and pain can both dive into absolute bliss into a, in a world where these dualities will no longer be necessary. Sri looks upon the present state of man as a critical point. Man has the cho choice of either transcending himself or perishing completely. Because uh, man being half animal and half divine does not have the staying power of animals. And uh, either man will be extinct and give way to another creature whom we might call a superman or man itself has to evolve into that superman the supramental man. So it's a critical juncture in the evolution of the earth, the evolution of life on earth and uh, that's why he's calling it a last desperate verge. Alone with death and close to extinction's edge, her single greatness in that last dire scene, she must cross alone a perilous bridge in time and reach an apex of world destiny where all is one or all is lost for man. So either all will be one and man will give way to a supramental creature or all will be lost for man. Man as we know him will be extinct. So to determine which way this choice is made, Savitri is going to play a significant, a critical role and that is why Narad pleads that do not stop her from marrying Satyavan. She is made for greater things, for higher things and her mission in life is to save the world from that doom and uh, take it beyond that uh, extinction's edge to a point where all is one and uh, the future of the world, the future of mankind is secured by man giving way to a supramental creature, a creature which uh, ensures that the affairs of the planet are conducted from a plane of consciousness much higher than the way they are conducted today.